Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday nights at Charity Church, and uh, so excited to have you here with us. You know, as a teacher of the Bible, uh, what I've realized is that there is literally an endless number of things that you can study in the Word of God, an endless number of topics that you can study in the Word of God. I mean, you can study creation, uh, you can study uh, the end times, you can study things like finances, uh, character traits like self-control, um, even bad character traits like pride. Uh, you can study the lives of people, the miracles of Jesus. I mean, there's just an endless number of topics that you can study, um, that you can teach. And all of them um, are not only interesting and intriguing, but they're also uh, important for our growth and our health as Christians. They help us grow. But what I've also found in the Bible is that there are topics, there are themes that aren't just sporadic throughout Scripture, or there aren't just, um, you know, portions of Scriptures about those topics, but they are literally running themes from Genesis to Revelation. You find it throughout the Bible. And, you know, topics like the love of God, Topics like the holiness of God, um, the plan and the story of redemption. These are all things that are throughout the scripture. But there's one theme that runs from Genesis to Revelation that, in my opinion, is underemphasized and just not talked about enough. And that theme is community. Community is a running theme from Genesis to Revelation. You find it throughout the scriptures. And one thing you can say about these running themes, there's actually two things. One is that these things, if they're throughout scripture, what we can conclude is that they are absolutely important to God. And that if they're important to God, then we need to make them important to us, right? Number two is this, is that if it's a running theme, that it's foundational and vital to our life as believers. You know, you might be able to ignore some of those other topics I mentioned earlier. You might not know everything about the end times or creation, but if you ignore the topic of the love of God and you don't have a revelation of God's love or of God's holiness or you don't understand the plan of redemption, then you, woe be unto you. I mean, these are things that every believer should have an understanding of and continue to grow in in their lives. And community is one of those. Community is absolutely important to God, which is why it runs throughout Scripture. I mean, you look at Genesis, the second chapter, and uh, at this point, God has created everything. And he's looked back, he stood back at his creation each day of creation. He's gone, it is good, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. He's assessed it as good. And, and when he creates man, he goes a step further and he says, it is very good. But then we go to Genesis 2 and God places Adam in the garden and he brings these animals to him. And Adam's unable to find a helpmate suitable for him. And what does God say? God says in that moment, it is not good for man to be alone. What an amazing statement. I mean, it's not just amazing because God said everything was good and now he's coming back and he said it's not good for man to be alone. But it's amazing because this is before the fall. Man has not sinned. There's nothing separating Adam from God or God from Adam they are literally walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam is experiencing the joy, the intimacy, the love that God has for him. And yet, despite that intimacy that he's experiencing with God, God describes Adam in Genesis 2 as alone. Isn't that amazing? And what does that tell us? What does that say to us? as people, is that God has not only created us for relationship with Him, 
but he's created us for relationship with one another. And we know the rest of the story. God brings Eve to Adam and they exchange the first marriage vows. But this ideal of it not being good for man to be alone goes far beyond marriage. It's not just about marriage. It's about us being created with a need for relationship with one another. And you hear people, I mean, if, if somebody comes to us, a lot of times Christians will do this or at least say this in some form or fashion, you know, that uh, if they come to us and they're expressing loneliness, you know, I'm lonely and da, 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 da. And, and we just kind of go on this, you know, hey, you know, people will let you down. Uh, you know, people can't meet your deepest needs and that there's a God-sized hole, a God-sized void in each of us that needs to, can only be filled by God. And that's true. There is a God-sized hole in each of us that can only be filled by God. But according to Genesis 2, because Adam was in perfect intimacy with God, there is a human-sized hole in each of us that can only be filled by relationship with one another. That is so vital, so important that we understand that, that yes, we have a God-sized hole. We have a need for God and in relationship with God. But we also, God has chosen to set it up this way. There is a human-sized hole on the inside of us that can only be filled by relationships with one another. And so, so community is found throughout the Bible, not just in Genesis, but throughout the Bible. You look at uh, how God brought Jesus to the earth. He brought it through a community of people. He approaches Abraham and says, hey, I'm going to make you a great nation. And you're, you're going to have this community of people and the promised seed is coming through this community. And then you even look at the law of Moses and the Levitical law and the Ten Commandments. You look at those. Those laws were given to the children of Israel by God. What for? To teach them how to live in community with one another. Every one of them are, are given to them to teach them how to live in community with one another. You move over to the New Testament and you look at Jesus, and what was the first thing he did when he started his ministry? He called 12 men to himself to walk with him, to live with him in community. And Jesus, you look at it, Jesus shared with them, Jesus taught them, Jesus did ministry with them, Jesus even asked them, asked them in Garden of Gethsemane to pray for him. This is community. And then what was the last thing that Jesus prayed before he left the earth, before he died on the cross? What was the last thing he prayed? He said, Father, I pray that they, talking about the believers, that they would be one even as you and I are one. He wanted community. Community has been in the heart of God from the very beginning of creation. It, it is it is the heartbeat of God. Uh, Paul's letters to, to, uh, in the New Testament, they're not to individuals. They're to local churches. They're to communities of believers. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts was a result of a community of believers coming together in one mind and in one accord. So community is absolutely vital to our lives as Christians and important, so important, a running theme throughout Scripture, important to God. But why is it important to God? Why is it important for us? Number one, there's wisdom in community. Proverbs says this over and over and over. If you look at Proverbs uh, verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 20, it says, He who walks with wise men will himself be wise doesn't say he who walks with God will be wise. We would totally understand that. But it says he who walks with wise men will be wise. And, and that's talking about community. Wise, walking with wise men. The word walk there, when you see it in scripture, it's not just talking about, you know, uh, you know walking down the road with somebody. It's talking about doing life with them. It's talking about a way of life. 
and and we need to surround ourselves with wise people. And by wise people, I don't mean people with titles even. I'm not talking about people with degrees. I'm not talking about people who are uh, even theologically sound necessarily all the time. I'm just talking about people uh, who are after the heart of God, who fear God because the beginning of wisdom is to fear God, people who reverence God, and what happens when you plant yourself in those communities and you bring your life to those communities, what ends up happening is, is that uh, those people become a voice of God for you. They, they can speak into your life. God speaks through people. And, and we can draw from that wisdom that is found in community. We, we know these scriptures, Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there's no guidance, people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, we could avoid a lot of trouble if we would surround ourselves with the multitude of counselors, if we would plan ourselves in community and bring our lives to community. Proverbs 15, 22, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. And I can, I can totally get this scripture because I, I can think of a number of times in my life where I had a decision to make where, um, you know, I, was, I had something in my heart that I wanted to do that I felt like was from God. And I would bring it to community, to people I built relationship with in the body of Christ, believers. I would bring it to them and... You know, and 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 let them know what was in my heart, and I, there was a number of times where they go, yeah, I can see that, but have you thought about this? And it, it saved me so much trouble. It saved me, I mean, just a lot of heartache many times. I mean, just looking back on these things, and uh, so we need to surround ourselves with community for the wisdom that is community. Another thing, and I'll close with this, is that there is strength in community. There is strength in community. Consider Nehemiah. God places in Nehemiah's heart a plan to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The Bible even says that the hand of God was upon Nehemiah. The gracious hand of God was upon Nehemiah. So what did Nehemiah do? Did he just take off and start building the wall? Did he go find and get an engineering degree online and, and then just say, hey, this is God's plan for my life. I got to go do this and just leave the community that he had built? No, he went to the people. He sought the help and the counsel of the community that God has surrounded him with. Nehemiah understood that his best efforts would not be good enough that he didn't that he needed the best of other people as well and I mean you look at Nehemiah 3 it's a wonderful picture of the body of Christ and of community because they start rebuilding that wall and remember uh, one person had one section of the wall you know another person another family or tribe had the next section of the wall and then there was another family or tribe next to them and another person next to them and another person next to them each of them had a section of the wall but none of it would have been any good without the other portions of the wall i mean what good is a wall surrounding a city if only your section is the only part done we they needed the other sections of the wall they needed the other people to complete what God had called them to do. And so like Nehemiah, God may have placed things in your heart to do. Or like Nehemiah, you may be faced with challenges in your life. You may need to rebuild some things, rebuild your faith, rebuild your marriage, rebuild your relationship with your children, rebuild your health. But let me encourage you that whatever God has placed in your heart to do, Whatever is in front of you to rebuild, God has not called you to do it alone. It is not good for man to be alone. Your best efforts are not enough. 
You need the best of others to fulfill God's will for your life. You need community. You need authentic community. You need deep relationships. And many people avoid these types of relationships. Many people avoid community because of the worst in people. But avoiding the worst in people means you miss out on the best in people, the best that God intended you to benefit from. And so plant yourself in community. Let me ask you this in closing. Who has God called you to build next to you? Yeah, okay, God's getting, giving you something in your heart. Maybe you've got a wall in front of you that God says, hey, I want you to build this wall. But who's called next to you on this side? Who's called next to you on this side? What are the relationships that, that God has called you to where their wall fits your wall? And think, think about this. Who are the people that God's called you to co-labor with? Who are the people that God's called you to grow with? Who are the people that God's called you to serve with, to, 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 to disciple, uh, to be discipled by, to mentor, uh, to draw from? We need, and then listen, if you don't have relationships like that, or you don't know what relationships are around you like that, I, I can tell you where they're at. Where does God want you to be planted at? The church, the local church, I know she has her flaws. I know that, uh, that, that, that people can, can rub you the wrong way. I know that I have my flaws, that they're spatting me, uh, that I might get on people's nerves. I mean, imagine that, right? But listen, but God has called us to one another. He's called us to one another. What do we do with scriptures like submit yourself one to another? What do we do with scriptures that say encourage one another, especially as you see the day approaching, and not forsaking the assembling of yourselves? Listen, don't fall for this trap that says that you can do life on your own, or that you have to do life on your own, or that you don't need anybody. All that you need is God and yourself, and that's it, and you're good. No, God has called us to one another. And so listen, I'm going to place uh, in the comment section um, after this teaching, uh, I'm going to place a Word document uh, to, to, uh, with some questions that will just help you, uh, some scripture that will help you study. Print it off. Uh, let God minister to you about this idea of community and relationships, and let it be a blessing to your life. God bless you. We'll see you guys Sunday, and um, thank you again for listening. Bye-bye.